Hello everybody, this is Ask Joshi, and we're about to do game number five of this Warlock Arena run with a whole bunch of creatures, a whole bunch of card draw, a little bit of removal, and hopefully some luck as we go into game five with a three and one record. I said that the goal of this would be seven and three. We'll see how it does. I think last game was good, but the druid didn't really have any answers for the creature spam that we had, so... I am saying we instead of me, or I, because my viewers, you guys, and girls, are my teammates, and we must defeat the enemy together. Knife Juggler, always great to have in an opening hand. Removal, always great to have in an opening hand. Other guys, just too expensive for right now. Try to get something cheaper. Now we have a whole bunch of ways to play. can't complain about turn one knife juggler, especially when you know you have a creature on turn two already. Because if he only plays the Silverhand Recruit, and then I play my Voidwalker or another two drop that I make a draw, that's a 50-50 shot of just killing it. I don't have three mana for Drain Life yet. Hopefully this will hit the Raptor so that he will trade. Yes, perfect. With the Voidwalker. Knife Juggler. Still probably my favorite card in flavor and art. He's just really cool. And he's really useful. Um, he's not as useful when a Raging Worgen is around because I don't want to enrage him and take 8 damage. Um, unfortunately, I don't really have an option right now. So we're going to trade and stay ahead in board control. We essentially just played 2-5 worth of creature for 3 mana. 2 power and two sources of damage. That's also very important to Seven notice because, for example, now I can break his shield with one and possibly kill him with the other with power overwhelming. Or I can play another board advantage card. He'll decide what he wants to hit and I can get in for some damage. With that divine shield, he's gonna kill something, so... Um, really doesn't matter to me which. Get the damage in while I can. And force him to make a decision who to attack with for himself. My mm. hand is kind of interesting. Acolyte of Pain can draw some cards, but normally you like to have him protected so that you choose how he's taking that damage. You want to hit lots of 1-1s one so that you can draw multiple times. I don't really have a taunter at the moment. Let me think. Drain Life is probably going to be our option this turn. Friend. No, he's actually going to play him again. Pretty good play. One shot, one Good value there. Reporting for duty. Alright. We are gonna draw Taunter, that's great. And the order is fine option. Since we have the Taunter up, we'll make him use some cards to try and get it out of the way. And still get our two damage in. I'm worried about doing enough damage because of that first game when I drew four fatigue cards and Paladin has a lot of heals, so it'll be tough to outlast him. Pretty good move there with the Hammer of Wrath, dealing three damage and drawing a card. Not on my watch. Ooh, good value again. Shadowbolt doesn't really help us right now. I also don't want to use Siphon Soul on something. 
So we're gonna play this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. We still have board control. He does have more cards than us, but we have two, basically three forms of removal and a card draw available. Silver Moon. Oh Shall yeah. Not <laughs> fall. I already forgot that he had him. Wolf Rider is gonna kill Acolyte of Pain for sure. Hellfire. Okay. So Siphon Soul will actually just get rid of this thing. Um let's see. We can also just do that with Shadow Bolt break the shield with the imp, shadow bolt him in the face. I but then I don't have the mana to play a Zer Drake. I won't also won't benefit from the restoring three health here, so thinking oh life tap. Ooh. That works too. Or that's nice at least. I'm gonna shadow bolt. At least now I can benefit from the healing of Siphon Soul, and if he plays out multiple creatures this turn, I can play Hellfire. If he plays one big guy, I can play Spellbreaker or Siphon Soul. Still in good shape. Yeah, yeah, you gotta be kidding me! <laughs> Reporting for duty. Okay, well, definitely don't want to silence him. Siphon Soul is uh, definitely going to be the option here. I should have life tapped first, cost myself one life. Hopefully I don't die by just one life. <laughs> Which is totally possible. Oh! Blessing of Kings. Ouch. Okay, so I can actually silence the 5-5, five five, play the Taunter and the Argent Squire, and still be in good shape. Power Overwhelming is something we want to use on Wind Fury Harpy, because it's amazing. So hopefully we get that chance. Deal 16 damage if you manage to keep Wind Fury Harpy alive. You can also kill an Iron Bark Protector oh, with her. My mm. Power Overwhelming may need to come out before Wind Fury Harpy, unfortunately, to deal with that Sunwalker. That's a good play. Hellfire is kind of a dead card right now. I don't want to wipe my board. If I don't have to, Rebel I may have to. Oh. Alright, let's see. Mm hmm. Unfortunately, it will cost me both of my creatures to kill this, even with power overwhelming. So many possibilities. So Hellfire is safe to use, I guess, in that circumstance. Mm, I could... No. So many possibilities. Just trying to think about how Power Overwhelming could give enough health for one of these to survive, but I have to deal three sources of damage still to kill this guy. And my guys would both still end up dead. Mm. Oh, this is frustrating. Let's see. I mean, Hellfire is a value move here because it's going to kill three other guys as well, so... I fight. We're going to Hellfire. Oh. 
play a value creature, so maybe power overwhelming will happen. I think that was a pretty good turn. I spent two guys to deal three damage and kill four creatures. Reporting for duty. Hmm. If I power overwhelming, do I use it to deal 16 damage or do I use it to kill him and deal eight damage? I think that's actually the better decision. Swing and a miss. Unfortunate. I do have Shadow Bolt in hand that's currently able to deal 5 damage, so that's nice to have in the pocket. Especially when you've got <laughs> 5 sixes being played. Reporting for duty. I am starting to look a little low on cards. So. We'll see if that ends up making a difference. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. 7 plus 4 is 11 damage already. If only Shadow Bolt could be dealt to the face. That would be amazing. So let's go ahead and play... Hmm. Try and get him to toss a knife over there. Hmm. Sure, do the switcheroo. Victoria. Ooh, perfect. That was going to end well no matter what. I think we've got a victory here. The victory. Yep. <laughs> Hooray! So now we're four and one. Pretty good. Anything above three and one I feel is good because it means you're gonna be ending over 50%. I could lose two more games now and still have over 50% win rate for this arena and that feels good. Feels better obviously from this point on each win that you get. So 4 and 1 is a great start to this arena run. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and tell your friends about this channel if they like Hearthstone as well. Maybe they'll learn something, you never know. And uh, yeah, I'll be back with game 6 very soon.